The very best of a British education in Malaysia. The University of Nottingham established the first UK overseas campus anywhere in the world in Malaysia. The University of Nottingham Malaysia is thriving, delivering a world-class British education to 5,000 students every year and recently celebrated its 10,000th graduate. Recognized globally, we are once again pushing the boundaries of global higher education with new initiatives that enable our world-renowned academics to reach out into ASEAN and beyond with groundbreaking program partnerships in Singapore, Laos, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. With five-star ratings for our teaching and research quality, we offer one of the highest graduate employment rates in Malaysia with around 90% of graduates employed or in further study. Our research is having a real-world impact with key strengths in food security, health and the environment. We connect world-class research expertise in Malaysia and the UK to address the challenges facing Southeast Asia. For a truly global university, experience the University of Nottingham, Malaysia. Hi, I'm Jeffrey. And I'm Shell. We are the founders of JS Study Solutions. Yeah, we started in Surabhad four years ago because we realized there was a market need. With the many years of experiences that I have gotten working in various institutions all over Malaysia or even from another country, it has given me the experiences that have accumulated in helping students to give them the best advice pertaining to their education needs. You know, over the years, we have seen many students struggle because they couldn't determine, they couldn't know what options they could obtain in the marketplace. And we providing the free services to them. But we have helped many students. We have actually assisted many parents as well, you know, in uh, applying to various universities, both in Malaysia and abroad, in countries like Ireland, Korea, Australia, UK, you know, even now we have uh, students of life in Spain. Hello, welcome to JS Study Solutions. This is my counselling division. This is the expansion part of our office and you are coming into our student centre. Obviously, uh, student advisory is what we do primary. But uh, more than that, we actually have the passion to provide a very good place for students to come here to use our space for free. Let me show you what we have here. Uh, this is our lounge and this is where the students will hang around and this is where they could actually just come and relax, mingle around and uh, just uh, be like home. Where students will come here, they can use our space, do revision, do discussion. But one of the things that we are doing in helping students to improve their English is actually to provide an English language proficiency course. So now you know what we do, and we at JS Study Solutions always strive to do our best for our clients and our institutions partners, especially our students, because they will always be our priorities. So like our Facebook to check out our updates regularly, follow us on our Instagram and remember to check out our website. You will find more information on our updates. Hello, good afternoon again, everyone. <laughs> good to see you all this afternoon, Saturday, a weekend. Uh, you're going to have a long weekend, so have a good week at home. Um, thank you for joining us. I'm Jeffrey from JS Study and Study Hub Student Advisory. Uh, we, I will be your moderator for this afternoon in this uh, series called The Turning Point. Now, Turning Point, we are already in our fifth episode this afternoon, you know, very, very fast. We are already in our fifth episode. I hope that you have been following us. I hope that you have been uh, watching not only just the Turning Point series, but you are also watching our other series, like the Career Insider. 
the uh, Global Reach and one of the other program in fully Mandarin, which is talking to students around the world, uh, top universities, and this is Turning Point. And uh, we hope that you have always uh, uh, loved our programs. And we are very encouraged that we've got many people who are like us, many people who have sent in their feedbacks. Uh, last week, I did mention to some of you here that uh, if you have got any other programs, any other particular universities or country that you would love us to share with you, feel free to give us the feedback. We will arrange it especially for you. Ken, great, great, great. Now, just before we start our program, let me just uh, give you a quick uh, housekeeping. Uh, two things you can do for us if you are there now. Okay, where you are watching us live, either in JS Studies Facebook or in Study Hub Facebook, do this a favor for us. Like it, follow it, and share it. Okay, today we're talking about engineering. Wow, it's a very, very good program, popular program. Many students have been asking for engineering, and we're going to talk about engineering. Okay, so share to those students who want to know engineering share to those students who want to learn about the technical science program and also a reputable university which i'll be introducing to you very very shortly ken now we will be also be putting in a form uh, uh, uh in the command box so if you have not put in your name kindly do so put in your name and your contact details you know we would love to get in touch with you for the coming programs you know we will also send our updates to you can do that. So also just to let you all know, uh, as the program uh, uh, is uh, running, it's approximately a one hour program here. Yeah? So don't hurry off, one hour program. But if you do have any questions that you would love to ask, you would like to know, you know about reg regarding to engineering, or maybe you have a questions that you want to ask our partner university this afternoon, Nottingham University, hey, feel free to send in your questions at the comment box. Uh, we will get back to you. We will answer those questions that you have. Can you do that? Okay, great. All right. So just as the time goes, share out this uh, live series of the turning point to your friends in your own Facebook. Okay. Now, without uh, 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 delaying more time, I'm going to introduce to you uh, our two uh, gentle lady and gentlemen. Can we bring them to the room? Hello. Okay. We have hello, Christy. Uh, yeah, I have known Christy for for a long time already. Yeah, uh, uh, we are brought, we are both from the same hometown, you know, but we are at our own home now. But um, Christy is the uh, student advisor. It has been with Nottingham for many years now. She is very well uh, versus uh, 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 knowledgeable with the admission processes, with everything that you want to know about Nottingham uh, uh, University Malaysia campus. So uh, Christy will be joining us. He, she is here with us. Uh, later on, she will come up again and she will introduce uh, uh, herself and then she will also answer some questions that I have for her. Okay, thank you, Christy, uh, for joining okay. us. Uh, yeah. Appreciate your afternoon. We'll see you again in a very, very short while, yeah? Okay. okay. The other person that I would like to introduce to you all, of course, um, is this gentleman, Professor. Are you there? <laughs> hello. Hi, Professor. Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, everyone, uh, I introduce to you Professor uh, Q, Q Policy. He is an engineer uh, expert. He, uh, he has been now lecturing in University of Nottingham National Campus for a while. He is also the head of department under the School of uh, Foundation uh, specializing in science engineering. Is that right, Professor Dr. No. Q? Okay, uh, he will be the one that I'll be speaking to also about engineering. And uh, I hear the one that will be explaining to you, all of you here. I, I've seen some of the slides, I've seen some of the video. Interesting. Look forward for it. Uh, I will just uh, ask Professor Q to just introduce herself uh, to the audiences before we start our Q&A this afternoon, Professor. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, you know, uh, Jeffrey, you know, for your kind introductions. And then first of all, of course, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank um, uh, all the organizer for inviting me to this uh, particular event so that I can actually share with you right what I know about the engineering yeah so basically I have been uh, joining I have joined in uh, University of Nottingham Malaysia since 2006 so wow. I have about 15 years right 15 oh. years now you know, in the of Nottingham so uh, full time you know full time actually doing uh, as a lecturer at the same time I also is a researcher all right yeah. researcher uh, as a scientist, you know, as an engineer, to do some research on the nano size and nanotechnology. Awesome. So, although my size, you know, might look a little bit big, 
But my research <laughs> is actually more on tiny things, militarization, oh. something yeah. that uh, most of students will see actually like the M man, yeah, nanotechnology yeah. and nanoscience. Right. So you will be creating a uh that that thing where we can bring people back to the <laughs> to, 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 to the future to the past. Yeah. According to the Albert Einstein, that is possible. Uh -huh. But in That's reality, true. of course, there are many obstacles, you know, there are many challenges that we need to overcome before we can yeah. be able to realize it. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, with technology, with science, you know, we really can go back to the to the past. You know, we we ch change the history, and who knows? Things will become so different. Yeah, thank you, Professor Q, for your thank introduction. You. Uh, but I say again, afternoon we have with us Professor Q and Christy. They are from University of Nottingham, Malaysia campus. To some of you here who do not know University of Nottingham. Uh, Malaysia campus, I think that is very unlikely. They've been around for so many years now. One of the reputable university uh, 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 in Malaysia, not only in Malaysia, a very reputable university in UK itself because University of Nottingham is from UK, one of the top university in the world, top 100 according to QS ranking 2020. Uh, they are in the RG group, Russell group, you know, and, and the reputation of University of Nottingham cannot be disputed. Yeah. All right, okay, come. So we're gonna ask Professor a few questions just to let everyone know since we are in this topic of engineering career as an engineer. Professor, can you share with us the first thing, the very important thing? What is engineering? Okay, all right, Sam, thanks. Okay, so to answer this, because I understand that most of the uh, audience here would be uh, students, you know, from yeah. the secondary school. So before I uh, would like to talk about the engineering itself, Perhaps, right? Perhaps uh, I would like to do a little bit of a survey, right? I mean, mm. One question to you all first, lah, okay? Mm. So if you're, you're talking about science and engineering, what is the first thing flash inside your mind? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyone with the answer, uh, put it in your comment box. Just put it in there. What do you think when you see science the word? Yeah. Okay. If you ask me, Professor, I would say that, uh, if you, I mean, I'm not a, I don't enjoy science. I'm sorry to say that, you know, uh, I'm a little bit more on the business side, but I think you say science, the first thing that comes to my mind is complexity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, you are most yeah. correct, right? So I have asked this question to many of my students before, yeah, and also to the parents, you know, when I'm having some, uh, some uh, talk, you know, together with them. So first thing that's coming inside to their mind, maybe it's a very complicated uh, formula. Yeah, science mm -hmm. engineering, you really see a lot of this uh, symbol sign that you 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 might not be able fully to understand, you know. You only see some maybe some worms, you know, actually sp uh, spreading there. Okay. And then some also might think that actually science and engineering, you know, is something like it's very dangerous. You mix yeah. A and B, then after that, boom, you know, you will come out in a light explosion. Okay. And then some also my my very funny, and then they will say that actually science engineering are uh, oh, first thing in my mind actually yeah. I'm I, I come across you know this image, all right? They should be a people with a very weird hairstyle. Okay, <laughs> so for the student, all right, for most of the science student, I think you should be able to know him. He is like Albert Einstein, one of the great you know physicists uh, in the world. Okay, and then some also will talk about because now in the new generation we have been influenced yeah by a lot of this uh, uh, social media and also you know entertainment. So when they're talking about science engineering, they talk about Iron Man. Yeah, Iron Man. Because inside the movie, you know, it shows that actually they are very uh, technological person. Okay, they are using a lot of the different various types of technology and then to try to you know save the world. Okay, but most of the answers yeah that I receive would be, oh, science and engineering, very boring. Okay, very very boring, very exhausting. You know, it's not sometimes it's not something that I can manage. Okay. Yeah, so that will be the first impression you know, to most of the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, right, if you want to change your, your perception, okay, if you're asking me what is science and engineering, okay, I would say that science and engineering actually is a magic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is also being uh being mentioned, you know, by this uh Sir Arthur Clark, okay, is actually is a futurist a science writer and also is an inventor for the satellite. So he mentioned that. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indescribable from magic. Yeah, from magic. 
So why I say so? I give you a few example. Yeah, I will give you an example. Yeah, right. Previously, right during my time, we watch about Star Wars, you know, movies, you know, we watch about Star Trek series. Okay, maybe for the new new generation, you might not uh, encounter this movie before. But this time, this movie, uh, this Star Trek series, actually is a very popular series. You know, in the past, okay, yeah. uh, 20 years ago, it's talking about fiction, talking about space exploration. Yeah? yeah. So during the movie itself, it's actually already showing that okay, you persons, you know, astronaut, you know, that can actually communicate face to face. During that yeah. time, right, 1966, 1970, 1980, it's actually it's a fiction. It's something yep. impossible. Yeah? yeah, it's something impossible. But nowadays, I think with, with the advancements of the science and technology, we already can have so much of the video calling technology. Yeah, which we yeah. already can talk face to face, not only one to one. Now what we are doing now here also same, right? Not only yeah. doing, talking about one, they also can involve a lot of the people inside. So this is actually, I would say that it's a magic. More example, yeah, a movie okay. Predator. Okay, well, I'm not sure whether you have watched, uh, watched this movie before, but if you watch this movie, it's about you know again a science fiction movie. It's talking about alien invasion. Yeah, our hero Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, try to fight with this uh, alien. And this yeah. alien actually, when they're looking at the human, they are not looking using their eyes. They are looking using their sensor. Yeah, yeah. the infrared sensor. So they sense us because all of us, right, actually we are having some temperature. That's why we're coming out, you know, with some infrared radiation. Although you cannot see it, I cannot see it. But now, right, but now with the technology, actually you will be able to see it. Okay? Yeah. So that's why. You can see here, we have the night vision in far right windows. Right. Wow. And then after that, we also have uh, something like this, okay, but for the Star Wars series, all right, when you go for the Star Wars series, uh, you have a uh, princess here, you know, coming, uh, try to uh, record the hologram, okay, try to request help from the mighty Obi-Wan, yeah. yeah. So this used to be a fiction. This used to be a, a something that you cannot uh, imagine is possible to happen. But today, with the advancement of the science and technology, you know, with the engineering, we actually able to produce, you know, the 3D yeah. projections in the water, you have the 3D hologram chest. There are many applications now, you know, actually we can use the hologram. Yeah. More example, Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man, I think this is a more latest movie. A lot of the students might watch this movie before. Spider-Man, you know, fighting, you know, with the Green Goblin. So the Green Goblin actually uh, is riding on his uh, uh, flying board, all right, yeah. surfing, you know, and then try to fight with the Spider Man. Mm. Now, right, we might we might not be able to fly yet, okay, we are not yeah. able to fly yet, but we already have some based on the advancement of the science and technology and engineering, we already can have something like this a water jet fly board, yeah? yeah, it's something like you actually you can fly, yeah. As a matter of fact, we also have inventor. Yeah, we also have an engineer inventor try to investigate is it possible for us to fly or not? The answer is yes. Although you know we are still in a very preliminary stage, they actually already have this kind of the technology. Yeah, can fly. Right. yeah. yeah? Can fly. So uh, here I would like to show you uh, maybe I can show you a movie, right? Oh. To show that actually how this inventor able you know to fly. Yeah, how this inventor able to create, able to engineer a machine that enable him to fly. Yeah? Sure.
can see, you know, someone we even able to fly now. Okay, but of course now we are still in the current uh, uh, primary stage, you know, not everyone, you know, uh, can be able to afford with this kind of system. But one day, yeah, one day I believe, you know, we will be able to fly. Okay, so back to you. Uh, hey, Jeffrey. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm, you know, as you were showing the slides, Professor, I was like, oh, you know, indeed it is so true that uh, what was uh, shown in uh, all the television all the movies uh, has become a reality it is it is definitely so awesome and and, and zapata the hoverboard i think something that uh, uh, is not impossible i think you are right that in future we may be able to fly to singapore by just putting on to a, a suit you know with a device and you can just fly off awesome awesome it's a very good overview what you show us, Professor, in, in, in knowing the revolution of how engineering has evolved over the period, and now we are actually living to see this kind of uh, 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 very wonderful creation, I would say, wonderful uh, design. Now, knowing that engineering has been uh, an awesome uh, industry many uh, many years, you know, and, and people have been talking about engineering, uh, just to share with us, uh, Professor, what, what would be some of the skill sets that a student would need or a, someone would need to become an engineer? Yeah, so if you're talking about the skills, yeah, the skill set, then definitely skills, we know that actually it can be cultivated. Yeah, it can be uh, trained, you know, can be trained to develop that kind of skills, a cognitive skill. But mm. if you would like to know whether you are suitable, you know, for the engineering professions or not, then perhaps, you know, I would, I would say that actually it's the character and also the attitude that play the most okay. essential critical role. There are a few questions that is that I always, you know, a lot of students also asking me. So am I suitable, right? I already finished my SPF, I already finished my IGCFC. So am I suitable for the uh, engineering or not? And can I do the engineering course or not? Okay. So for this, I just uh, give you a few tips. Right, you look at yourself, you ask yourself whether you have to feel you know this kind of the character or maybe you have this kind of interest, then maybe you are uh, uh, suitable, you're appropriate to pursue mm -hmm. you know your further study in engineering. Yeah, mm -hmm. so let me share my screen again. Okay, okay, so how do I know if engineering program is suitable for me? Okay, first of all, if you found that you are very enjoying playing a role strategy computer games. Yeah? So maybe a lot of you are know, asking, oh yeah, why if I like to play games, I like to play a role strategy games, you know, actually I would be suitable for engineering. This is because uh, of prof, I'm sorry, prof, uh, prof, sorry to cut you off in the middle. Yeah? Uh, you, the, I, I can't see the screen. Are you sharing? Oh, I can't screen? see the screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We can share right. again. Sorry, thank you. All right, okay. I'm sorry, okay. Sorry. Oh, can you see me now? Can you see I can see you, but now? I don't see the screen or uh, the share screen. I mean, okay, I think it's coming up. Awesome, yeah, we got it there. Okay, that's great, that's great. Okay, so first of all, first, uh, you're talking about uh, enjoying playing uh, role strategy games. Yeah, role strategy games, as you can see here, okay. Because why you, uh, those actually like to play uh, this kind of games, right? Uh, mm. you know, Mobile Legend, you know, nowadays, PUBG, you know, I know all the youngsters are very keen to play. When you are playing this kind of games, actually, you are training about your brain. You are planning the strategy, yeah, how to win the artificial intelligence, how to win the opponents. So when you're doing the planning, okay, when you're uh, putting in the strategy, actually, this is one of the very important elements for engineering. For engineering, we need to think out of the box. We need to be creative. All right, yeah. we cannot refrain ourselves within a small box. Yeah. So that's why if you're very enjoying, you know, playing the role strategy games, so that would be one of the criteria, you know, pointing that actually you are suitable for the engineering program. Yeah. yeah? On top of that, all right, you might be uh if you also is a person that always constantly follow the new tech gadget update. You want to know, you know, there is a one apps coming up, you know, how to do these apps, you know, and then you have a handphone coming up. Or some gadget coming up, you want to try it, you want to know further, you know, about this particular gadget, what kind of the new function you know available. Yeah, so this is one of the uh, character for the engineer because they yeah. actually would like to update themselves, you know, a lot of the science and technology advancement. 
They always want to stay forefront. They always want to be updated to be uh, something that uh, can can uh, can be always be be we call it the, a tax saving. Yeah? yeah, something that actually you can always be in the forefront and not uh, be outdated or leaving behind. Yeah? yeah. So if you have yeah. a character, that also means that you are suitable for engineering program. Yeah. Right. And of course, if you are always find, always finding pleasure, you know, in solving puzzles, in solving puzzles, this, this one actually about the same one, right? Uh, the first yeah. one. Because when you're solving a puzzle, you are actually you know, using your mind, planning, strategy, okay, looking at the different uh, of the on, on the certain problems, you know, with a different perspective, with a different perspective. So this one definitely, yeah, is something yeah. that is engineer is required. Mm. Well, of course, right? Besides that, you also need to have uh, you have need to have a very keen interest in the mathematics and physics. As I tell mm. all my students, yeah. mathematics and physics, you know, is actually is the backbone, yeah, mm. to the engineering. So yeah. if you would like to do engineering, make sure you know you study hard, you work hard for the mathematics. And physics. Mm. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And then on top of that, of course, you also need to be uh, intellectually curious. Curious, okay. Mm. You need to know, always have the uh, intention to know further. Okay, why this one can happen? Huh? Why somebody can fly? Okay, why this one? When I very this, you know, I I will putting myself in the three D world. Okay, what is called maturity? How mm. maturity happen? Why I playing games? Ah, huh? when I when I controlling my my joystick? Ah, huh? you know, finally, mm. you know, my also can be. They also be doing the same thing. Why? Why this happen? Okay. So if you have this kind of the intellectual curiosity, yeah, you are the right person, you know, for the engineering program. Okay. Mm. And of course, not, last but not least, would be attention to detail. Attention to detail yeah. it means that you are looking, you know, at a certain issue, a certain problem, not only at your at your angle. You are yeah. actually looking in everything, you know, in a true manner. Just for example, uh, you are playing games, yeah? you are playing uh, like this mobile legend, right? You, mm. to, uh, you know, your opponents. You are not only looking at your screen only, looking about your hero only. You also will try to look at the map. Yeah, the map indicating where is your where is your comrade, you know, where is the enemy, right? So that whether you know whether you have to go to that particular area or not, right? If your comrade actually is having a problem, you are going to assist them, you know. So you mm. actually talk to people pay attention on your role, but you are paying attention to the whole thing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's why you do things as a truly, you try to interpret things, you know, in a different, from different angle, from different perception. So if you have this kind of the ability, if you have this kind of attitude, then I would say that you are suitable for engineering. That's All right. Very good. Thank you, Professor. You know, I'm just curious, do you play mobile legend yourself? Because I heard this term mobile legend from my kids. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that you also know this mobile legend. So, you know, uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah because okay. a lot of these games, right? Gaming industry, uh, actually, you know, gaming industry is something that related to the engineering as well. Yeah. There right. are a lot of AR, you know, VR. Now we call it, we come into the, uh, the MR, right? The, yeah. Mixed reality, no more artificial, uh, no more the augmented reality or virtual reality anymore. Now uh, we're mixed reality or the new term, mixed reality. So it's like emotion is involved and very nice. You know very what nice. I'm talking about what is called VR, you know, what is called okay. AR, what is called okay. MR, you know, and all of this actually we call it actually under the, the uh, umbrella called XR, extended okay. uh, reality. So awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, okay. Uh, just understand. Mm, thanks. But uh, just again, uh, to touch base with some of the audiences who just joined us. Now, we are speaking to Professor uh, Q from University of Nottingham Malaysia Campus. Uh, if you have any questions in regarding to engineering or in regarding to Nottingham University, do feel free to put in the comment box. We will get back to you very shortly. Uh, uh, Kang Chin, I saw your question over there. Don't, don't hurry, go. We will answer that question in a very short while. Uh, we will just uh, move on with the presentation and the questions first. Yeah? Uh, professor, you know, I hear two things when you mentioned about the skill sets. I think it's about interest and character, very important. And you, you already mentioned something that I want to ask you, actually, the next question is that uh, what are the subjects that the students should be good at if they want to partake engineering as the major of uh, studies? But I think you mentioned about mathematics and physics. 
Yeah, but let me ask you. Let me ask you in this uh, because this thing just came up. Now, physics are uh, basically, of course, for science-based students. Yeah, they have learned physics. Now, just curious, student who is from upstream, but they are quite good in maths, but they do not have pure science. They got science subject. Can they also join engineering field? So we have to, uh, for this particular issue, we have to look into what kind of the thing they study about the science. Yeah, so mm. if only normal science, right, uh, we, it will be difficult because the normal science is only a very introductory level. Right, we need right. something we call it integrated science, extended science. Okay. Yeah. So if you do a okay. science subject, you're doing extended, all right, you're doing mm. integrated. So that will be uh, more closely, you know, to something like uh, what we learn about physics, what we learn about chemistry, you know. So that will be more, uh, we will serve as a, a better fundamental, you know, for the student if they intend to pursue the engineering profession. Yeah. Right. So okay. I would say that at least general side, it might be a bit difficult because the mm -hmm. level might not be sufficient. But if you are interested, mm -hmm. okay, you can do mathematics, you can do uh, additional mathematics. At the same time, mm -hmm. you do have extended science. Yeah, the right. science, whereby the science uh, level is a bit higher compared to the ordinary level of the sciences, a science subject. Yeah, okay. if that's the case, we can consider, you know, for, right. for you to come in to do the engineering. Right, right, yeah, All right, okay, good. I mean, it's also good because you mentioned that, so at least you give them a head start before before they join into the even the pre u foundation program. All right, thank you. How about is engineering a rewarding career? Yeah. Okay, if you want to talk about rewarding career or not, okay, um, of course, you're talking about monetary, you know, later on, I will show you, you know, uh, some of the, uh, what they call it, the salary guideline, you know, what, mm -hmm. what, what, what kind of the, uh, graduates, you know, can expect when they have a fresh grad and they become a junior executive, you know, senior executive. Then I, then what actually I can share with you before, later on. But now, okay. how would I talk to become an engineer? Your satisfaction, you know, your rewarding experience is not only based on monetary only. Yeah. Right. Because engineers, they are always at the forefront. Mm. All right. Always at the forefront, forefront of the technology. Yeah. Mm. Whatever technology evolution, we engineers, scientists are always at the forefront. Yeah. Mm. So that's why maybe I can share uh, my screen again, you know, to show you some of the slides uh, that I prepared about talking about industry revolution 4.0. Yeah. Okay. Now we are really stepping into the industrial industrial revolution 4.0, and this is a risk, of course, right? It's a, whenever there is a revolution, definitely there is a risk. But at the same time, it's also actually it's an opportunity, yeah, opportunity for the engineer as well. When there is right. a risk, it's always an opportunity, yeah, right. because the world is in balance, always in balance. Sure. Okay. Let me let me share screen first. Uh, yeah. Some of the slides. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, so as we just now, we're already now in the industry 4.0, right? We've only gone through a three uh, industrial revolution before. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, uh, you know it, you realize it, you realize it, we actually already gone through. The first industry uh, revolution, the IR 1.0, is actually when the, uh, the, 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 the steam engine, yeah, the steam engine is being developed. So it changed uh, the, the, the way how the Factory works, you know, from the using the fully the labor to using the engine. So that's why we mm -hmm. have the room, you know, so that one actually is 400 years ago. Okay. So after mm -hmm. that, we come to the industry 2.0, whereby we have start to use the electricity. Yeah, electricity starting to be invented, to be put inside into the manufacturing, to be put inside into the industry. So we have the mass production, you know. So that time actually we've gone through the second uh, industrial revolution. Then after that, right, just a couple of decades ago, we gone through the third uh, industrial revolution. This is the time whereby we call the industrial uh, 3.0. This is uh, the revolution to you know, on the industry to let the industry to uh, engage with the automation, yeah, with the computer, with the automations, with the with the manufacturing line. You know how they actually not only rely on the labor, but they can do something automatic. So that one actually is in the industrial 3.0. But now mm. we step into the industrial 4.0. Now we not only need to be automatic, yeah? So industrial 4.0 is again, you know, we are integrating the technology we have in the industrial 3.0, but at the same time, we want to uh, add some added value in it because we try to combine, yeah? We try to combine automation, 
with cyber war. Yeah? yeah, so that's why we come up with a lot of new terms called cyber physical system, the CPS, Internet of Things, IoT, right? Or IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things, networks. There are so many new term uh, terminology actually coming out to describe about this. For the industrial 4.0, we need to integrate network, right? We need to integrate the cyber world with the real physical system that we have currently. It's just like when you are playing Pokemon Go now, yeah? So you will have the AR, uh, we call it the augmented reality, you know, technology, all right? So you can snapshot, sure you can have a background, actually it's a background of the location. And suddenly, you know, you have those things actually just really popping up, which is interacting with you. Yeah, so this one actually is one of the example of they are connecting your actual, you know, environment, actual physical thing with the cyber world. Yeah, mm. so moving forward, we'll be going more and more on this particular uh, area, right? And then there'll be more and more technology coming out on the uh, out of the revolutions of the industry 4.0 here. Yeah, mm. okay, so we're talking about uh, uh, industrial 4.0, right? Engineer. Yeah. I mean, we need to expect that we need to work in a smart factory now. No more the mm. the manufacturing line, you know. So you might need to work in a smart factory. Smart factory that will be able to provide smart services, all right? You might be able to do the remote maintenance, okay? Mm. And then you have a smart machine, all right? Smart machine actually can let you to do the remote control. You no need to go to the site now. Yeah? Yeah. You no need yeah. to go to the site. You no need to do something, you know, uh, to mm. control everything on the side. Instead, mm. the system is already on the cloud, all right? Then later on, the basement, even though you actually you are not on the side, you are somewhere away. Let's say your factory, you know, your, your manufacturing line actually in Malaysia. But during that time, you are in UK. You actually also can control, all right? You also actually also can uh, monitor, troubleshoot, or even you can design, you know, for the system to ensure that they are in the normal operation. So that's why mm. now we are this is a smart factory, you know, we have a smart home, uh, now we also have a smart factory. So this is actually what the product I would say, you know, we have to go through under the industrial, uh, industrial revolution 4.0. Yeah. This is some of the pictures, yeah, you can see that, we are talking about smart factory, robotic, yeah. Yeah, robotic arm, robotic in, you, we are talking about, you know, you, you, need, you can do the scheduling, you can do the planning, you know, online, okay, you can do the troubleshooting, you can do the maintenance online, they have a predictive, you know, uh, technology to, to test or to determine whether the system actually is intact or not, or if they are they are, they are, they are having some issue. There are some preset, you know, uh, mechanism to reverse back, you know, the operations. So we are actually in the stage to push through the gap between the physical system and also the cyber world. So this yeah. is actually who are holding the key, engineer, right? If you are holding this key, then you will be success. You will be able, you know, to be success in this revolution. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, what kind of the technology? We always know that technology will change human. Mm. Yeah. That's right. In that zero, we also need to have a few uh, te technologies to enable it to happen. Yeah? So these are some of the terms. Maybe you are you are uh, used to it. Maybe you heard it before. Maybe you don't know what is that about. Okay, but these are some of the technology that definitely we need to use, you know, in order for us to be prepared, all right, in order for us to, uh, to equip ourselves to uh, encounter the Industrial Revolution 4.0. Artificial intelligence, for sure, okay, cloud computing, okay, robotic, and also the additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing actually is talking about, you know, the 3D scanner, okay, you can do a lot of scanning now, okay, later on I'll show you. Uh, maybe some of the pictures and then we're also talking about the immersive technology yeah immersive technology you already realize it now we have so many of the virtual reality you know the augmented reality uh, mixed reality as i mentioned just now okay and one more important technology you know to, that we need to equip ourselves with the big data yeah the big yeah. data so this kind of technology is actually we call it as an enabling technology that is very essential so as an engineer we always, you know, looking into our curriculum, right? When we're training our future engineer, we need to ensure that they will be able, you know, to tackle with the problem associated from the industry 4.0, okay? So that's why we equip our students with this kind of technology to prepare mm. them 
they are when they're going to the work later on, they are aware, you know, with this kind of the revolution, they are aware, you know, with this kind of the of the leap in terms of the technology, and then they are yeah. always in the forefront, you know, in the in the in the technology line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this one basically I just want to show you, you know, how the technology is uh, uh, you can you can you can uh, adopt it, you know, and then try to create a new value, an added value to the human being. So it's very simple. We can we call it the Internet uh, of Things. Okay, we can collect yeah. data. We can collect data from the surveillance camera. We can collect data, you know, from the vehicle when vehicle yeah. passing through. You know? So that's why now you can see the ways, you know, a lot of people. Yeah. Can encounter police at the roadblock and you try to put in you know saying that this section got the roadblock so beware all right they will put this inside the waste so this is what the data actually as an individual can put in right at the same time smart gadget sharing in the in the social network in the facebook in the instagram you know you can share this when you share this kind of information this is a process that can be gathered this is a process uh, whereby the data actually can be gathered and transmit yeah and transmit to the data analysis and also the storage stage before that of course we need the mobile technology so that's why we're talking about lte we're talking about 4g 4g already outdated now we're talking about yeah, 5g 5G, yeah. 5g yeah wi-fi li-fi right yeah. a lot of the transmission technology actually also going on along the line yeah then based on this transmission then we need big data or we call it uh, cloud computing yeah system to store the data, right? To analyze the data. So this one is called the big data technology. We have a lot of data from every individual, you know, from the consumer, from whatever persons actually they are providing data. We need a system to able to store mm -hmm. the data and at the same time able to analyze the data. And this is the technology we call it as a cloud computing. Yeah. Then on top of that, we are not only for analyzing. We need the system now to do yeah. judgment we need yeah. to train them right we need to train the system so that they can think about themselves based yeah. on the data they have what kind of action they're supposed to take yeah so this is actually we call it as a artificial intelligence ai yeah, yeah? so based on all this information finally we can come out with something that can be beneficial you know for the for the humankind which is a uh, creating a new value for them for example yeah. we're talking about smart factory we are talking about you know the autonomous vehicle the vehicle the car that can actually drive by yourself okay smart home smart factory smart healthcare you know smart infrastructures so everything yeah. are caring about the smart now right the smart yeah. smart actually is the wording connecting between the physical your physical uh, uh, subjects with the cyber world so that's why whenever you have a technology connecting between both, that thing is considered as a smart, right? Like yeah. a smartphone. So we have to train our, our student, you know, to adopt you know, to this kind of uh, technology. This is an opportunity for engineer. So this yeah. is some challenge, I would say, you know, for our future engineer. So that's why if you talk asking about whether uh, engineering is it rewarding or not rewarding, okay? So I would say that yes, this is something that we can explore. And one more trend, right? I believe, right? All yes. of us are like to do online shopping, right? You like to do online shopping, Lazada, you know, Shopee. I also like online shopping. And then around all the world, you know, people are like to do online shopping now. As a matter of fact, if you look at uh, the Alibaba, okay, on the uh, 11 11 sales, so even within one day, yeah, within one day, they recorded about 38 billion of sales. Yeah. Okay. Huge amount. Very, very huge amount of sales, even within one day, only within one day. Yeah. Okay, now we have the sales ready. What's next? We a lot of people purchase from you already. What's next? Definitely the next stage would be you need to deliver the products. That's you right. need to send the product to the consumer. Not only sending them, you know, one month later, three months later, they will definitely complain. You need to send it fast. So that's why when you're processing the orders you need to do it fast right mm -hmm. so you need to have a technology to help you right to incorporate the smart you know features when you're handling uh such order when you're dealing mm -hmm. you know such huge amount of the business mm -hmm. so that's why we can see that industry right some industry for example like amazon alibaba 
when they are dealing with this kind of sales, you know, this kind of orders, they are using robots, you know. Yeah. You know, we have the Amazon Kiva, we have the Alibaba Quicktron, you know. So these are the robots are helping, you know, on uh, delivering, uh, on, on segregating the goods, you know, on uh, transporting the goods. On they are actually, uh, I mean, by incorporating such technology, you can reduce the human error, of course. And second thing would be you can do it in a more quick, more uh, efficient manner, time saving, and of course, uh, you can reduce the, the labor, right? You can reduce the true reliability on the labor force. Yeah. So here I can yeah. show you uh, what the video, right? Uh, that is talking about uh, the robotic system. Yeah, the robotic system, a very smart robotic system that has been used by the Alibaba in one of their warehouse, one of their warehouse in Guangzhou, on yeah. how to handle. You know, uh, their their orders, how to handle the delivery. Yeah, please. Very smart. They, even though they have many robots, you know, in operation, they won't collide to each other because they have yeah. sensor to refrain themselves from collision. At the same time, when they're out of battery already, you know, they can go back to the place, you know, to do to, to do the charging. So it's a mm -hmm. very smart robot system. Yeah. So that's why you know you can see that in the past uh, two decades, you know, we can coming out with so many types of the business, so many types of the uh we call it the internet you know entrepreneur and then you refer back you know refer back to the to the fox uh, report we can see that we can see maybe some of you some of the faces actually i show you here is we call it a very successful internet entrepreneurs okay they are using the technology you know in their in their business so that's why engineer yeah engineer i would say that because we will equip you yeah, with this kind of technology knowledge to train you yeah on how you can uh putting yourself, prepare yourself to face the industrial revolution 4.0. So maybe you know this, you know, uh, the Jeff uh, Bezos, the Amazon CEO, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Page, you know, Sergey Brin from Google, okay, uh, Larry Ellison, Oracle, very successful uh, um, internet entrepreneur, uh, Ma Hua Teng, all right, which is called, sometimes called a Pony Ma, Tension uh, CEO, Maybe tension you do you do uh, compared to Jack Ma la, right? You don't know about tension. Yep. But tension actually is a very gigantic company in China. Yeah. So uh, you're talking about WeChat. You're talking about you know uh, Arena of Valor a game, yeah, which is a, a Chinese version of the Mobile Legend. It's actually by Tencent. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Alibaba, you know uh, Jack Ma. I think you know. So. This is actually creating a lot of this uh, business opportunity we call it as a technopreneur, industrial technopreneur. So engineer, we, view, we try to equip you, you know, with this kind of knowledge, but of course, ultimately later on, you have to be creative, you know, you need to be innovative uh, when you're working in your career in the future. In future. Mm. Okay, if you're talking about job scope, right? a lot of students also asking me, yeah, how about this job? Can I find the jobs or not? 
So of course, I always tell my student, I'm not the fortune teller. I cannot tell you what will happen, you know, in uh, three years time, four years time, when you graduated later, I will not know. But as a very simple guideline, you can refer, you know, to some of the uh, websites you know, available is talking about the job. Okay, so this is uh, one of the screenshot I uh, wrote on to one of this website called Job Street. I think uh, all of you should, uh, maybe you have heard about this before. Yeah, so if I'm talking about the engineer term, you know, inside, just two days ago, yeah, they are popping up 1,502 jobs available. Yeah, so of course, you maybe can put in, you know, some of the uh, students now, I know that they're talking about what is their starting salary. You actually can put in, in the minimum salary, you know, in the website, try to search out. Yeah, <laughs> so let's say if I just put in 3,000, 3,000 there, of course, the type of the job, you know, the number of the job we use, but you still have about 1,400 jobs available in the job street, which is related wow. to engineer. Yeah, yeah. engineer. All right. So as I always tell my students, regardless of whatever situation, if there is a society, all right, if there is human, we will need engineer. Because yeah. engineer do everything, you know, everything from the from whatever that actually you are interacting with. PC, desk, table, computer, car, petrol, water, infrastructure, house, bridge, whatever you name it, you know, they must we, have one engineer yeah. actually is working in the production line. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So they are very resistant, very um, how to say that they, they can be actually can sustain, you know, they can sustain even though what kind of economy, uh, even economic crisis. Of course, maybe the job availability is not much, but that is actually is a profession required by the society. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about the salary skill, right? This is uh, the report. Uh, I try to get you know some average you know uh, range of the salary. Oh. The job report. Okay. Of course, this is only a guide. It's not absolute. I would definitely believe that the company outside there maybe offering higher. You know, maybe offering sometimes maybe offering lower. It's actually mm -hmm. all depend on what kind of company you know you are. Trying to, but mm. this is a range, salary range, you know, for the, the fresh graduate, as well as uh, when you work, uh, when you already confirm, you know, you become a junior executive, and you go for the senior executive level, manager level, you know, the senior manager level. But this is only a guide. This is definitely is not absolute. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, salary is always sensitive. Uh, if this is only a, a average market rate. I'm pretty sure that you know they um. Having they are, they are different company, they are offering a different salary scheme. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, uh, Professor, I want to just uh, um, I mean, when you were explaining about you know how rewarding the career of engineering uh, is, you know, I, I get uh, your your what you are saying, and one of the last uh, few sentences that you share is basically saying that uh, even though uh, you know people talking about because of uh, IT, I mean technology is replacing human. But nevertheless, engineering will still be there because engineering is is needed in every sector, water, you know, products and, and whatever not at roads and everything. Yeah, I think that is that is awesome. Which also leads me to ask you this question is that meaning that there are many types of engineering courses are there, Professor. Uh, can you share with us some of these types of engineering courses in the market? Yeah, uh, traditionally, right? Traditionally, we actually have a four area of engineering. Yeah, uh, main four area would be the electrical electronic engineering, mm -hmm. civil engineering, mm. mechanical engineering, you know, dealing mm. with the mechanical system. And then we also mm. have the chemical engineering, dealing with mm. anything about chem chemical products. Yeah. Yeah? So they are the very conventional, very typical, you know, uh, area of the engineering. But right. with the science and, uh, and also the engineering advancement, we are mm. doing more and more specialized really. We are mm. doing more and more specialization. So that's why mm. we can come up you know, with a lot of a new uh, engineering area. Okay, for yeah. example, like we come up with uh, some uh, environmental engineering, yeah. aeronautical engineering, aerospace engineering, uh, marine engineering, yeah, or even nuclear engineering. Yeah. yeah. So that one is more and more on the on, on their specialization. But All in right. conventional yeah. of course, mechatronic engineering, because now yes, we're talking right. about mechanical, you know, and also the electronic. Yeah. Yeah. Mechatronic engineering is also mm -hmm. one of the mm -hmm. of teaching, uh, engineering mm -hmm. uh, specialization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, 
Yeah, so this is a uh, conventionally we have a four, but now we have a more variety in the market. Right. But but saying this one, right, the, the conventional and also those uh, uh, new new emerging market uh, in what you mentioned about some of these engineering courses. Now, you see, over the years during our consultation with students, a lot of them are basically very concerned with this thing called the professionalism engineering, which means that professional, how to be a professional engineer. You know, they, they, they think that uh, it is so important and, and uh, you know, we have advised them on professional engineer. Uh, but nevertheless to say, uh, what would be the pathway to become a professional engineer? I mean, does it require in, in all the specialism or just only certain uh, specialism? Yeah, professional engineer actually is, uh, from my perception, actually is quite essential because uh -huh. when you become an engineer, you would like to serve as a consultant. You would like, you know, to provide uh, overview, you know, to guide a certain industry, how they are manufacturing, you know, in the manufacturing line, how they set up the manufacturing plan, how they actually incorporating, you know, the new technology into their manufacturing line. So ultimately, if you want to become a consultant, yeah, mm -hmm. so definitely you need to become a professional engineer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps I just uh, share my screen to tell you mm -hmm. about uh, about the. Uh, process to become a professional engineer. Can you see my share screen now? Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, talking about, you know, on uh, how we can become the professional engineer in Malaysia. Because the governing for the quality, you know, for the engineering program actually is by DSC, which is mm. what engineer is one of the very critical uh, member uh, right inside. So basically, for those students who have obtained yeah, the, the degree, a degree in engineering, which is accredited by the EAC, which is accredited, you know, which is recognizable by the EM, okay. So they will, once they graduate, they, they, can, they can register themselves, you know, as a as an IEM graduate member or a BM graduate member, a great BM graduate engineer, okay. Mm -hmm. Then after that, of course, they need to work. They need to practice what they have learned, yeah, what they have learned from their from their study. So within three years of the uh, relevant working experience, okay, mm -hmm. the logbook scheme, that they would be able to apply, you know, to become the professional engineer. Of course, right. during the process, they need to go through, you know, the uh, professional interview by the BM member, by BM panel, and also they need to go through, you know, the PAE, the professional assessment examination. But mm. you can see actually they are much more straightforward. Yeah, they are very straightforward. Meaning that actually you learn, uh, you to pursue a degree from an accredited uh, university. Then after that, you register yourself as an IM member and work practice. You know, work practice your what you learn inside your, your study. Uh, perhaps you under the guidance of a mentor. You know, from the from the as a, from the professional engineer. Then after three years, you can apply to become a professional engineer. Yeah. So if you would like to to serve as a, a to open up your own consult, uh, consultant company, then perhaps you might still need to take this PCE as well. Yeah? We call it a professional engineer with the uh, practicing certificate, yeah? the PEPC. So mm -hmm. you might need to uh, go through the second tier right, for this. Right. So a lot of students are talking about the professional engineers. A lot of students also asking me, what is the difference you know, between uh, MNG program? Because when they're looking at uh, the uh, yeah. program, what is the BNG, you know, what is the MNG? Yeah. Yeah. The difference between bachelor engineering, engineering, and also the master in engineering. So right. bachelor engineering, master engineering, apparently, okay, you you might be confused. You will be confused with the wording, even though I say it's a master engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Master engineering in this context here is still an undergraduate program. But the main difference between the BE and also the ME would be accreditations by the Board of Engineer Malaysia. Yeah. By the BM here. So the accredited, accredited degree in Malaysia, we only recognize a four years program, which is the MENG, the Master Engineering. So if you believe that you would like to pursue your professional uh, engineer you know, status, which is uh, finally you can carry the IR title, that doctor is the R, um, uh, for engineer, professional engineer, you are carrying the IR title, then you can go for, you should go for the MENG program. Because it will give you a very straightforward pathway. Straight after your graduation, you can register as a member, then work, you know, collect your evidence, collect, uh, practice your what you have learned. Then after that, within three years, you can apply for the professional engineers. But if you right. 
doing coming from doing something which is not recognized, yeah, which is not recognized by the by the ESC, you know, by the BM, then you your route might not be so straightforward anymore. Yeah. Mm. For example, like perhaps you know you might need to do a further talk up, you might need to do a further learning, you might need to do a further MSC. But this is also not every MSC, you know, will be recognized as well. So you have to uh, spend more effort, you know, you might need, this means the pathway might not be so straight, straightforward anymore. You might need to encounter a lot of hassle. So, yeah. if you would like to become a professional engineer, if you would like, you know, to open up a consultation firms, that actually you can have your sign, you know, your child to endorse a certain project, you should choose for the accredited program, which ultimately, you know, can lead you in a, uh, to, to become a professional engineer in a very direct pathway. Okay? And then uh, I also received uh, some questions about uh, uh, students were asking. I, I, I do your program, right? I do the program, engineering program in Malaysia. It's actually accredited by the EAC, for example. So later on, if I don't want to work in Malaysia, can I go to overseas to work or not? Yeah, is it recognized you know, in overseas or not? So if you're talking about this uh, recognition, right, you, have to, uh, you actually uh, can feel relief uh, because uh, our degree, right? Actually, all the accredited degree, all the uh, engineering degree accredited by the ESC in Malaysia, okay, yep. are one of the signatory, you know, in the Washington Accord. Yeah, mm. in the Washington Accord. So yep. in the Washington Accord, you know, we have a uh, twenty full signatories currently. So what is the benefit for this uh, uh, Washington Accord would be? Uh, each of these country, the participating country, they will recognize. Yeah, they will recognize the degree that has been endorsed you know, by that council or by that mm. particular education body you know, in, the, in right. that particular country. So it should be no issue. So mm. let's say, for example, after you uh, graduated in Malaysia, you want to work in the uh, US. Can or not? No problem. Mm. Right? This actually is one of the symmetry. Uh, how about if I want to work in Korea? No issue. Yeah? Mm. Australia, Canada, yeah? Hong Kong, Singapore. Uh, Pakistan, UK, yeah, China. So all these countries actually we, they have a, a under the Washington Accord, you can actually recognize that. that actually the degree is recognized. Yeah? yeah. So you can increase your employment opportunity and also uh, it's easier for you like, to gain the, the professional recognition even though you are working abroad. Yeah? Oh, right. Okay, back to you, Jeffrey. Thank you, thank you, Professor, for the very comprehensive and well explained about the professionalism engineering. Uh, and also, you have actually, you actually touched on the MH and the BH, which would be a question that I wanted to ask you a bit later on. But since you have answered it, and I thought that is very, very good. So, in to say that uh, even though the Masters of Engineering is not actually a master program, but it is useful because uh, of, of the recognition part with the Board of Engineering Malaysia. Now, I, I want to just uh, uh, also ask that uh, in Nottingham, because it is a UK-based university, the, the, it is a four years program, right, Professor, to get the Masters of Engineering. Yeah. And yeah. if they so just... It's a four years program. For the BA, it should be three years program. Uh, so three years so program, you know, some other country, if you do not intend to become a professional engineer, you still uh -huh. can do that as well, right? No right. Issue because it's actually... Uh, is you still a professional degree, okay? But if you are working towards a professional engineer pathway, then, then it will be more recommended for you to do the MEG and not the BEG. Yeah. Right, right, so, but right. if you only want to work later on, you, you have no intention to serve as a consultant, you have no intention you know, to deal with anything with the government agency in mm. future, then mm. you can go for the BEG. So, the benefit for the BEG will be you have uh, you pay one year less you know, for your degree. And of course, at the second time, you might be, you might be having a one year extra uh, working experience. Uh, yeah? But right. of course, the choice will be there will be no so, so straightforward way for you to pursue the professional engineer status anymore. But yeah? there is no problem with the employment when you are talking about three year PH, right? Yeah, which is an no awesome. Issue at all. Yeah. No, and, and, and I have many students actually graduated three years in OBH the program. They are working now. Right. Yeah, as long as they are not actually going, you know, uh, dealing with uh, recognition with the, uh, with the government Malaysia, let's say, for example, they need to deal with government Malaysia, they need to sign something, you know, so mm. if that one definitely they need to uh, yes. have a professional agent. You know? yeah. But if you only work in the manufacturing plant, you know, just working inside a company, you know, yeah. troubleshooting a certain mm. uh, system, so that one, uh, if you, if you, if, uh, the, the professional engineer status actually is not required. 
Right. Very, very much thank you. I appreciate that a lot because uh, I think this is a very important uh, question. That's why we want to spend some time on here because it means that in Rockingham University, we can finish a, a degree in three years and you can still get an employment. I, I think if the students can see there's a catch there. If you were to go to other universities, uh, the local based universities, you have to do a four years degree to get a BH. And this is an advantage for them because it's been three years. So thank you very much, Professor, and, and I appreciate that very much. You know, uh, and it enlightened me as well as the counselor uh, on this matter, and I appreciate. Now, talking about this, you know, I, I want to bring Christy up uh, to the room. Uh, I think she has been in the bedroom for a while already. We're going to talk about Nottingham engineering in Nottingham itself, uh, 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 and we are moving towards that already. Uh, we, as we, uh, the audiences, uh, you already know that. I mentioned much earlier, University of Nottingham Malaysia Campus is a renowned university, not only just in Malaysia but around the world. They are top premier award-winning uh, university, and I'm sure that a lot of you students are very much interested to know about engineering at Nottingham. But before we just go on to ask about that one, I think we got some questions that I want to I want us to try to like uh, answer them because I think they've been waiting for a while now, Professor. Yeah. Christy, uh, if you know of you, I think. Uh, uh, okay, uh, maybe I should, uh, I should, I would, I should uh, reply on Henry. Henry was ask, is asking that, uh, where can chemical engineers find their jobs? Which industries hire chemical engineers? <laughs> can anyone of you enlighten? Chemical engineer can work in any, yeah, okay. So in any pharmaceutical company, cosmetic company, oil and gas, yeah. Yeah. Any uh, cement company, you know, anything that dealing with chemicals, chemical engineer yeah. need to be there. Okay. And on top of that, you know, uh, chemical engineer not only doing something on the processing, they are actually right. also doing a lot, you know, in terms of the environmental control. Yeah. Right. So that's why we also have the chemical engineer with uh, environmental engineering. So we need right. to preserve our environment. We do not right. want, you know, the, the industrial to, to to pollute our the earth. So that's why now. The, uh, the chemical engineer, not only, you know, they need to talk about, you know, the, the processing, you know, how to design the process, how to minimize the cost, minimize the, the, the waste, you know, improve mm. the profession, improve the yield. But we're also talking mm. about reduce the impact to the environment, reduce the waste. Right. right. Okay, so Henry? Any, any pharmaceutical company, you know, any uh, food food company, you know, food industry, uh, right. a lot of chemical companies, a, a lot. Of, Chemical engineer have a lot of the opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think Henry, I hope that answer your questions. Basically, job will be available for you. Nothing to worry. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of opportunity. A lot of industry will hire you, uh, Henry, and um, chemical engineers. Now, I, okay, as I ask, uh, I want to just bring these questions to, to, to you all, to ask you all. Now, why engineering at Nottingham? How how you all want to say this? Why do you why should we study engineering? In University of Nottingham. Yeah, I think Prof, you have the slides, right? Yeah. <laughs> I bring up the slide. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, right. So why you, you have you want to study in Nottingham, right? Uh, wow. Maybe I just uh do a quick one. So uh, yeah. first of all, of course, we are talking about you know we have. Uh, we have a five star rating of a star, you know, we are the top 100 university in the world, you know, we have mm -hmm. students from 85 different countries, so we mm -hmm. have three different international campuses. So there are a lot of things actually, you know, we are we calling ourselves we are the extraordinary uh, university. Okay, but one one common thing. If you go to any of our uh, branch campus or our main campus, you know, in the university park in UK, you will see that you know we will have this uh, signature structure, we call it as a clock tower. Regardless mm. whether in the UK or in our campus, our branch campus in China, here, when you see a university mm. with the clock tower, you know, in their main building, mm. most likely that will be the University of Nottingham. Yeah? Mm. So why University of Nottingham, right? As I mentioned, you know, rank 96, you know, University worldwide in QS ranking. We are the 66, you know, now uh, employability ranking. Yeah? 66 are the choice of the graduate employer in the QS World Employability Ranking. One subject ranked top 10, 23 subject ranked top 20, 200, 60 subject ranked top 100. Myra 5 star, Star 5 star. <laughs> All these are our, our uh, uh, indicator showing that you know we are providing high quality you know, for our students, high quality education for our students. And then yeah. on top of that, all right, on top of that, 
we also have the uh, one of the most uh, advanced, I would say, more one of the most advanced uh, facilities provider, you know, for mm-hmm. all our because we have about a hundred acre campus in Sydney. Wow. Yeah? Yeah. So hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, more than yeah. hundred acres. Yeah, okay, thank you, Christy. Yes. Yeah. So as we can see here, yeah, so we are having uh, this is a uh, one of the bird eye view you know, for our beautiful campus. So we can provide a lot of the space, you know, for the students to, to do learning, right? Mm-hmm. To enhance to do their group project. At the meantime, their, their welfare, you know, also being uh, taken care of. I said, as, 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 as why you can see at the background, you have a swimming pool, you know, you have a football field, you know. So during current time, of course, you know, it might be difficult for you all to visit the campus, to visit mm. the beautiful campus. But I, I think now, right, because I'm an engineer, we are, right, we should know that we cannot be constrained by this pandemic. Even right. though you cannot go to our campus, you know, uh, on site, you should be able to go it literally. Yeah. Okay. So that's why now I'd like to take you to have a little bit uh, of a virtual tour, you know, about our campus. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Let's enjoy watching this virtual yeah. tour. All right. So, can you see my share screen now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So, as you can see, right, this is our the bird eye view from our campus. This is our main, you know, building. We have two. Uh, what we call it the, the, the lake, right? Crossing you know, in the crossing bridge here, it's also like you're having a two lakes, but actually they are with the one lake. But this is a uh, design it's mimicking, you know, it's mimicking our campus in UK. If you happen, you know, to go to the University of Nottingham in UK, we also have a big lake, you know, uh, in front of the campus, and also mm. a very famous crop tower trend building. Yeah, mm. so we have a closer view. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Uh, so this tour, right, as you can see, actually you can go into our website here, tour.com.au, not mine. Maybe mm-hmm. now the network is not uh, very good, but anyhow, uh, you will be able to see here, yeah, mm-hmm. how beautiful is our campus, very green, yeah, super green, and also very tranquil, very, uh, very nice, very greenery, and unofficially, you know, many, uh, they were the one survey has been done before, it has been considered, you know, one of the most beautiful campus. Yeah, in the top wow. ten. Wow. Yes. Right. Okay. But this is of course is talking about the greenery. Uh. So at the background here, this is actually is the core we call it the Broga Hill. For those actually like yeah. to climb hill, right? Climb. Uh, this is uh, Broga Hill. We are very close to it. But mm. scenery is one thing. More essentially, as I mentioned just now, is talking about the facility and also the labs, you know, that we can provide for our students. So you can go inside, you know, into this uh, virtual tour here, tour here, you can see about our electrical power lab, right? So we have a lot of the sophisticated lab to let the student, you know, to train the student to have the hands-on experience to handle with a very high-tech instrument, yeah? So this student actually at the background, this is Farah. I still remember her name, because why? Because she is one, actually one of my students, one of my uh-huh. students. student, yeah. <laughs> So she's uh, become a, a model you know, here. Uh, if you go for our project lab, yeah, you can see her again. Yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> project lab, whereby you know, we equip uh, a, a lab for our students to do their project. So they will be equipped you know, with a, a, a monitor so they can do their project, they can discuss, mm. at the same time they can refer. If they have anything you know, to refer, you know, they can showcase to all their group members. So mm. it's a very versatile and very, uh, friendly, you know, can helping the student to do all sorts of the activities. Mm. Yeah. So what Farah doing here actually is, uh, she is actually is a EAD student, electrical electronic engineer student. So he, she is actually trying to, uh, to do an autom- automated toy car here. Yeah. So this toy car actually will be following the path, mm. right? The path has been set. So she is doing some setting there actually. So beside that, you can see that if you're doing in chemical, right? If you're doing chemical engineering, we also have a chemical engineering lab available. Inside that, we have a lot of the equipment, high-tech equipment that is actually available, right? That's actually uh, uh, can let the student learn more about uh, the equipment itself, you know, how the process flow. They can have the hands-on experience on that, yeah? 
And then uh, a lot, of course, beside the lab, we also have the facilities, a lot of facilities I mentioned just now, you know, the football field, all right, a great football field, as you can see here, all right, a huge football field, if you're able to see, right, if you can't, you can actually just log on to the tour dot Nottingham book if you don't mind, to see this mm. wonderful football field, then we have the uh, gymnasium, okay, the gym, swimming pool, you know, actually everything actually is inside, library, Very nice. uh, Four to five stories, you know, of our library that have a lot of the resources, a lot of the books available. Okay, and then the teaching block, right? The central teaching block, you know, a lot, you know, type teaching block inside. So we have space. We have a lot of space. We don't need to cram our students, you know, within a one office building. So yeah. we have a lot of the freedom, you know, to move around, to 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 really feel, you know, the university lifestyle. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this would be the second point. Yeah, why Nottingham is different. We okay. have all sorts of the top notch right. facilities as well as the uh, lab, you know, for our students. Right. Okay? So the Pro third point would be about our existence, our experience. So we have been here since the uh, year 1999. Yeah, the operation is uh, 2000. That's been about 20 years here in Malaysia campus. Uh, sorry, in, in Malaysia. So, as we out of these 20 years, we have uh, building a lot, we have gained a lot of network with our important stakeholders. Yeah, our important stakeholders with the government agency, with the industrial partners. Yeah, so that's why our students, they, have, they can access, you know, to this kind of a network. They will be able to have a better learning experience because we can always, you know, uh, par them, we can always, you uh, can uh, uh, arranging, you know, some opportunity from the industry for, the, for our students for example like we can inviting you know our industrial collaborator to come to our campus to give a uh, talk you know to our students uh, whenever there is a need you know for them to do the interns they also can go for the uh, those company so we have that kind of link that kind of the link that kind of network so yeah. this is actually is an experience that we have you know for the past 20 years so not yeah. every uh, university, you know, we will be able to do that. So yeah. I would say this is our third important point. Yeah, why we should, uh, why why our Nottingham actually stands out compared to the others. Thank you, Professor. I think I think that is very also a very comprehensive and thank you for the 3D tour thing. You know, I give a very good overview how the campus looks like. Indeed, it's very very huge large spaces. I've been there a few times already myself. Uh, my my nephew is there actually, and and uh, indeed. It's, it's a beautiful campus and very, the trees are all grown up, you know, very big, very shady, very nice. I'm, I'm putting this one, you know, just ask the next question. Uh, yeah, that's right. Already 20 years. Uh, 20, 20 years now, yeah. So, 20 so, years so uh, There's a student who asking us uh, this program, which I thought I want to ask you now since we are, we are here. Uh, you mentioned just earlier on there's a mechanical, mechanical program, a mechanical laboratory, you mentioned about chemical engineering. Uh, what other specialism that uh, Nottingham offers? And the boy Kang Ching is asking, do you offer biomedical engineering as well? Oh. We offer biomedical science. Oh. Yeah, it's different, different field. Yeah. Okay. Uh, explain it. All right. Who comes to biomedical science? Biomedical science is different from biomedical engineering, right? I think yeah. one is more on the equipment, the, the designing yeah. the equipment. Yeah, building the instruments, yeah. Yeah, but biomedical what, what, science yeah. is the medical research on right. the cells, material, and viruses. That is the science part. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Kang Ching, I hope that answer you because uh, they do not have uh, biomedical engineering. They do have biomedical science, more on research based work in laboratory. Yeah, Kang Ching. Yeah, hope that answer your question as well. Uh, now, okay. Uh, uh, Christy, you want to continue to say something? Uh, um, any, okay. Any maybe maybe some of the audience. I uh, would like to know what are the facilities or accommodations or what are the scholarships that offer. Yeah, okay, before yeah. I say that, uh, maybe Prof, you can explain that the uh, engineering, uh, what are the intakes that we have? Like, I think. Mm. Like, if let's say for SPM levels or IGCSC levels, right, they can join us for the foundation engineering Okay, mm -hmm. before they can progress to our degree program. Yeah, we have right. April, we have June and for September intakes, uh, three intakes. Okay. Yeah. When, when okay. will be your June intake? I'm sorry, just quickly. Uh, uh, June is actually 
starting next week. Okay, right, our right. Parents, yeah, yeah. So next one will be in September. I think mm. if if the the audience now got the is a IGCSE levels right. Uh, mm. once you receive the uh, uh, results in about August, you can join in with our September intake. So mm. this is a one year uh full year program, sir. So mm. when you are successful completion this foundation, you can progress to a degree in next year September. Right. And earlier on, you mentioned that there is a scholarship. There are some scholarships available for students who are applying for yeah. the uh, foundation or even to the UG program, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I will just inform to the audiences if you want to know more about scholarship programs, maybe you can just come to Study Hub office in Klang, Jinjaro, or even to Chair Study in Surabaya. We will let you all know. Keep it a secret for you to ask us more <laughs> after the show, right? Okay. Right. But, but Christy, you may, now that you're mentioning about this. Uh, Classes are starting in June next week and in September. Mm. Now, it's COVID pandemic 19. I think this is something that everybody wants to know. How are you all uh, overcoming uh, in terms of uh, to, to, to support the learning uh, 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 facility uh, for the students who are who will be from home, right? They'll be living from home online. Yeah. 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 I think back you? to you, back, back to Professor, because yeah. uh, he is. Uh, the person who is uh, teaching in front of a computer online, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, how how you how your experience is? Yeah, I can please share. Oh, okay, okay. So maybe I just uh, share my screen again. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we all know now, right? We are in the pandemic, uh, case, uh, pandemic uh, uh, influence also as well. We are not being able you know, to go to the campus currently. Yep. But us now, we are still doing, yeah? we are still doing the teaching for our students. We are using mm. the online platform. So as I right. mentioned before, right, we are not only relying on the face-to-face -face teaching, but mm. now we actually also adopt another sort of face-to-face, face-to-face through the cyber world. Yeah. Right. So that's why, as you can see here, right, we are using some uh, learning management system called the Moodle. Yeah, mm. the Moodle. So inside the Moodle, actually, we can slot in you know, all sorts of the uh, information, teaching material we can put in, lecture notes, you know, and then if we have uh, recorded, you know, our lecture notes, we also can put in, you know, our recorded uh, video about the lecture itself, we can put it in, you know, into our uh, Moodle learning, uh, learning management system. And then we, we have some questions, some tutorial questions, sample questions. We also can upload that. Students actually can download it anytime, anywhere. Yeah, as long as they got internet, they can download it, they can look into it, you know. And then on top of that, on top of this uh, Moodle management system, uh, learning management system, we're also using the, the other technology software called the Microsoft Teams. Yeah, Microsoft Team. So inside the Microsoft Team, we are having the meeting, we are having the classes online. Mm -hmm. yeah. So during the classes online, we will explain again, you know, about the lecture or maybe some, right. some of the uh, questions. And also we can discuss face to face with the student uh, mm -hmm. during that particular slot to we'll discuss with them, you know, what kind of issue they are facing, what kind of problem they are facing, you know, when, uh, when they when have anything to understand about the content itself. So they can discuss with us, they can chat with us, they can also, you know, video call us, they also can discussing face to face, you know, in the cyber world. So right. even though we can meet physically, but we all still can meet, you know, in the, in the cyber, uh, cyber mm. area. You know? So mm. uh, that's why, as you can see here, right, I have interacting with my students, students actually responding. And then during the class lecture, you know, we also can record, record the yeah. lecture, and then it can be shared, you know, inside this particular uh, software here. And then students mm. actually, if they miss out something, they can always come back and refer to the record. So. Right. They, even though they have no physical contact with the student, but the interaction is still there. Yeah, students still can engage with us. We still can engage with our student. We still can discuss with them in case of any issue, any problem. They also can refer to us, you know, in a very uh, timely manner. And then they also can see us, our face. Although when I want to ask all my students, you know, please switch on your camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. Yeah. Yes, so right. see, I cannot see them, but, but it's not a big issue, right? But at least it's still the interaction. It's not like you're talking to the uh to the, to oh, the very you know, mm. monitor screen, but at least you are having something to talk to you in a in a right. live manner. 
and then to solve you to solve some issue that happened and to help you whatever you encounter any any problems great yep. and then there also students also I, I didn't put here would be we also giving some online assessment we also have yeah. an online assessment system uh, basically Moodle also can do you know they can log on to the Moodle system to do some online assessment or yeah. answering some question and then after that if they, we also can have a uh, even the student, we also can allow the student even can do you know their questions using the papers or is at their home because they can always upload it. They can always snapshot, upload you know into our system, and then we can do the marking accordingly. Mm. So uh, it's very the, the system is feasible, and the students uh, based on the what the feedback you know received from the students, it seems like actually they can cook well. With the study. Right. Thank you, thank you, Professor. And I think that uh, will give a lot of comfort to many students and parents and and guardians. You know about online learning. Uh, this is a new normal. Uh, we will have to go through it, and uh, it will be at least until the year end. Yeah, online learning. So, uh, yeah, thank you uh, for the explanation, and I'm sure that uh, University of Nottingham has got a very strong uh, backup uh, in terms of online learning, and and you can see. Professor Kiwa, one of the lecturer, you know, he's so dedicated. Yeah, audiences. Now, there's a question from Jun Chuan, just to answer this question. Okay, uh, can foundation in science student apply for engineering degree? Do they have the skill, do, do they have a skill sets to apply for engineering degree? And what is the working life as an engineer? Uh, three questions in one question <laughs> box. Uh, maybe I take out the questions for the foundation science. Okay, may I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Please. Because uh, there are different uh, because some other universities that is talking about foundation science. They have they can choose physics, MX subjects in their syllabus. But oh, mm. foundation science and foundation engineering actually is separated. For foundation mm. science, mainly study for bioscience, okay, pharmacy, uh, environmental science. So the modules move to the biology and chemistry, mm. uh, without further max, and without physics subjects. Okay, for foundation entry is many students will study a lot of different physics subjects and further max max and further max subject and no biology subjects in foundation engineering here. So this one, uh, so students have to choose wisely which pathway of degree they want to progress later. All right, then uh, the skill set, yeah, just uh, already reply. Engineering require physics and maths. Okay. Uh, for science require biology and chemistry. Okay. okay. <laughs> How about the working life of an engineer? Working life. You're back to the engineer here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not, life not, not, not really, not really. always challenging, okay. yeah, but you can enjoy the pleasure. Yeah, as I mentioned just now, because you are enjoying, you are enjoying about all the challenges you receive every day. It might not be the same one. Every day you are dealing, you know, with the different types of uh, problems in the manufacturing plant and manufacturing line okay so you need to troubleshoot you need to design but you will enjoy the pleasure that you can get the satisfaction you know when you're able to solve a certain matter a certain issue a certain problems in an innovative uh, manner mm. so i would say that yeah it's challenging but you get a lot of the satisfaction if you're yeah. able to yeah. solve a certain issue you know based on the innovative solution that you provide that's right yeah mm -hmm. yeah yep okay um we i i i've done with my questions already uh professor i mean professor and christy any of you have any uh things that you want to share uh, uh your own? maybe i share a bit about uh facilities that we have yeah. uh, not, not for ahead. the academic side is non-academic side huh? okay yeah, let me yeah, share yeah. my okay um screen Second. No worries, Christy. No okay. Worries. Yeah. okay. 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 I'm share about the accommodation first. Mm. Oh, okay. yes. Important question. So we have yeah. different different type. Okay, you know, uh, our university is located in Semenye. Yeah. Semenye is a, a place that is uh, within the borders of Negri Milan and Selangor. So mm -hmm. some people would say oh, it's very far away from city center. How how will be the life there? Is it very 
very boring. Okay, but I'll tell you that uh, inside, once you step into the campus really and you live there, your your life is quite uh, enriched huh? because you will have a lot of students' uh, activities to play around. So even yet you are staying in the city centre, you might don't want to go back. You want to get a place to stay there because uh, other than your lecture time, you want to go and meeting with the your your club uh, societies, quite, quite packed with your uh, daily life. Huh? So you can mm. get a room there. We have uh, different types of rooms. So we have about 2,400 uh, 2, beds uh, on campus, but we have about 5,000. So uh, half of our students may need to uh, find a place outside of the campus, okay? Uh, but no worries, nearby also got a lot of off-campus accommodation, mm. houses or com uh, condominium for you, okay? Mm. So the, the most uh, popular is deluxe single and third bath bathroom come with AC, aircon, okay? So for minimum 395 for four people sharing to maximum 750 per month. So all the rooms cover with Wi-Fi and uh, water and electricity bills. Okay, mm -hmm. so all these things are covered. Okay, so the next one, okay, you can see this one is a 2D thing. Huh? Okay, so the accommodation we've uh, separated into old wing and new wing. Old wing mm. will be in the red color here. We have five hall residents. This is called Student Village South very close to the canteen, very close to the sports center. While for the new wing, it's all the uh, 750 per month is located here. So students have walked a bit. You do exercise now, okay? Students can buy bicycle there and cycle in the campus. Wow. Okay, yeah. Okay. So the color building here is the academic block, okay? With its science, engineering, uh, arts and social sciences, library, okay, lecture theaters, student activity centers here. Okay, um, next slide. Okay, these are our food and beverages, convenience stores and services uh, uh, available in the campus. We have 24 hours, uh, 7-Eleven. Uh, every Tuesday, we have night market, Pasar Malam. Mm. Okay, every Thursday, we have some food trucks coming to the campus. So even you don't go out to the campus to buy food, you can get the food in the campus, so no worry. Okay, we have two ATM machines, uh, CIMB and Afin Bank here. Okay, there are 24 hours laundry machine, coin operated one. Okay, we have two convenience store, uh, my news convenience store beside the 7-Eleven. The we have a software. We also have secret recipe on campus as well. Okay, we have a mobile phone. You can buy your, uh, top of your SIM card. Okay, you can buy a lot of vending machines in the campus as well. Okay, we also have a bus, shuttle bus services for those who are living, uh, Outside, okay, like in uh, KL, in TJ, they can still commute every day. We have a, a shuttle bus from the Kajang KTM station or MRT Sungai Jane station. So this is quite convenient for them. Where we also bring students to test for Sabanye. Like during this now, uh, the COVID-19 period, right? Uh, we have about 600 students staying on board in the campus. So yeah. they take the advantage to go test for Sabanye for shopping. Mm. Yeah, buy grocery. We have uh, developed a mobile app. Where is my bus app to track the buses? So, wow. so no real students can able to access to anywhere. They even want to go to KL, yeah, KL Teaching Center. We have a uh, nighttime classes for our MBA uh, and our MSc classes there. Students also can go out to there. Okay, and uh, it, during the weekend, we also got buses send students to IOI City Mall in Sabajaya. Wow. Okay, for those who are living outside of campus, Taman Classes Manye, we also bring uh have the shuttle van uh, services. So this is all uh free free of charge. Huh? Okay, then now uh, come back to the scholarship side. Okay, high achievement scholarship, dean's excellent scholarship. These are all automatic one, twenty five percent discount, automatic mm -hmm. for the just the current year. High achievers is the uh, entry year. Okay, mm -hmm. dean's scholarships are for every progressing year depends on the academic performance. Now, let's say for uh, foundation students, okay, because you come in with SPM result, IGCAC result, it's go for the three semester foundation. So these are the minimum to get the 25% discount. Okay, it's a minimum eight A's for SPM. IGCAC is minimum seven A's, okay? If you come from UEC, uh, we need minimum of five A's, excluding Chinese and Malay. If we come from STPM, it's three A's. Huh? excluding the general studies. If you are from air level, it's three A's as well, okay? So if you have any uh, 
family members like your siblings study here or your parents are Nottingham alumni, okay, you can get the 10% tuition fee deduction, but for mm -hmm. the just the first year only. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if you are very active in sports or very uh, active in the arts, artistic event, in international event, you can apply for sports or arts scholarship. Okay, 50% discount for national level, 75% for international level. Okay, you can approach to our sponsorship office to discuss this uh, for more details. Right. Okay. We also got other scholarship for you to apply. You can click our scholarship website to find more information. Okay. Yeah. And PTPPN loan also available for students for undergraduate studies. Okay. Yeah. So another thing is uh, very important. The unique things is uh, in Nottingham is our program. We allow students to uh, do inter-campus exchange or inter-campus transfer to our UK campus or even our uh, China campus. Okay. Exchange, inter-campus exchange is students are able to go to the UK or China in their second year, either doing one semester or one full year. Like for mm -hmm. example, for engineering program, it, most of the programs are available in both campuses. Uh, okay. So students can apply for that, but this depends on academic performance. So right. uh, the fees is remain paying to the Malaysia campus fee. Mm -hmm. Okay, but while your expenses is spent over there, like, this is a good experience for students to explore a, a different international uh, uh, campus life. Okay, right. Yeah. We also got U21 or Partner University Exchange. So for more details, you can uh, look at our website for more details. Right. Okay. I think that's all. <laughs> so anything you can, uh, yeah, uh, can reach Study Hub or JS or contact us. Or you can mm. browse our Facebook. We have social media for you to connect with us. Okay. Mm. Right. Thank you, Thanks. Christy. Yeah. Uh, Professor, anything to add on? Uh, before we uh let you go for beautiful evening <laughs> walk. <laughs> right. Right. Thank you, Christy. And I, 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 I appreciate the slides that you showed. The last few slides, I think, very, very important. I think mm. students, you know, if you all don't know where Samanye. Uh, let me watch. Sabanya is not like what you think, you know. So, so, so. Not in the jungle, right? Uh. Yeah, Sabanya has transformed a lot. Eco matches. I would. I want to promote the developers, but there are many <laughs> big developers there building new houses. You know, Sabanya is no longer a sleeping town. It's really a emerging township very nearby yeah. to Kajang. Nottingham has got everything for you. you. Do you see that? You know, they have got shuttle buses to go to a lot of shopping malls, including our ICD mall. You know, they've got uh, the convenience stores in the campus, they've got swimming pool, sports facilities, gym, gym and, and, and hostel facilities. I, I don't know what else you all want from a campus here. Yeah? Anyway, uh, okay, uh, one last question. Lele, Lele is asking this question now. Still can go outstation to study with this COVID-19? I think she probably didn't hear earlier on. Uh, Professor, mm -hmm. you want to just we we inform about the online yeah now now it's because uh all our programs are go online and the yeah. directive for ministry right is uh uh yeah all programs is conduct online yeah yeah so it's okay. pointless if you're going to uk then after that you stay at the hostel <laughs> yeah, and watch everything online yeah yeah yeah, so yeah that's right pointless. Yeah, no. All right, right. Until, then, subside, okay, subdue, then only you can go there, you know, to do as an exchange to there, you know, to experience a life there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Lele, that answer the question. Basically, everybody is going online now, hopefully until the year in. And next year, if everything goes very well, you will be able to enjoy back going to Nottingham and enjoy the facilities and whatever not that you are looking forward to, right? Okay, uh, thank you very, very much for both your precious time. We have spent a lot of uh, a good time uh, learning about the career in engineering. You give a very good overview, Professor, uh, about engineering, the demand, the evolution of engineering. You have given us to understand uh, BH, MH, uh, 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 and, and uh, also the opportunities to evolve in certain um, uh, uh, industry that relates so much to engineering. You know, uh, so much thank you for your time. Christy as well. Uh, thank you for the last two hours you are here with us you know sharing with us the scholarship opportunities sharing with us also the uh some of the uh, facilities and, and whatever not we're going to end right with a video to show nothing come but yeah. before that uh let me just uh, conclude uh and saying this that uh thank you all uh for your time those questions has been asked uh has been answered if you've got any more questions feel free to 
uh, browse through Nottingham website. Yeah, they got more information there. Uh, if you need to speak to Professor Dr. Q, I think that he also don't mind that you email to him personally. I think he got email there. Uh, if you got more questions, always come to JS Study Study Hub offices in Clams and General Sirenban. We'd be more than happy to help you to guide you. Now, just to uh, uh, come to an end, thank you for your time, everyone, the audiences, the students, parents, wherever that where you are. Uh, beloved Nottingham staffs. I want to just remind everyone that our next program is a very powerful program, interesting program. It's called Career Insider. Career Insider is our next program that is going to be uh, starting this coming Wednesday, 10 of June, 10 of June, 4 p.m. You better like our Facebook, share it, follow it, do whatever you need to do. We're going to have a very good interview with YB Hanayo. YB Hanayo, I think you all know her. She is the member of parliament for Sugarboot. She is uh, going to come live with us uh, uh, and discuss about the career in politics. Right? Okay, so stay tuned, everyone. Uh, have a good weekend. Have a good long week. You know, I will most birthdays on Monday. Happy birthday. I will write, I will go. God love you. And uh, see you all. Yeah, and uh, thank you again. I'm doing Jeffrey. I'll be signing off. And uh, bye. Thank you. Bye bye.